thing we're going to talk about later. After all, I'm going to put G2NS. People are going to be crazy. Oh, they have 4 2, blah, blah, blah. I think that both games that G2 lost, they got completely outdrafted. And that can be a concern in itself, right? It can definitely be a concern in itself because they seem to be really, really hinging on this idea of having a stronger bot lane and diving that and picking the stronger, strongest jungler in the game and just hard pressuring that. And when they are not allowed to do so, they kind of are ending up in shit, dra shit drafts. Oh, holy moly, Janusz. Janusz1, thank you very much for the 10 gifts subs. That is amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is, that is the greatest thing anyone has ever done to me. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I, I, I believe G2 is S because still they've shown the highest level in the early game. G2, I think deadliest early game by far. When they're in a situation where their lanes aren't as strong, they don't really consolidate their draft by thinking about the later stages of the game. And I think this is something that G2 can figure out. They have the player to do so. And in their game against SK, they made a wrong judgment in terms of how they should path. They got Dove, and then later the draft which is unplayable. Like picking Akali on 4 into Maokai, Lulu, Severe. I mean, sorry, Yumi, Severe, Maokai. So this was G2 in their first loss against SK. So they, the enemy first pick Elise and then Varus and Graves. And this kind of shows to me, right, that they are not really interested in playing Yumi themselves. And then Yumi Sivir was picked. Because the main issue here, right, what G2 recognized coming into the next game is that they have to red side ban Yumi. If they red side ban, ban Yumi, they can create a situation where either they get the strongest bot, 1-2, or they counter the first pick bot. Okay? Which is a very big deal. Okay? This is what they recognized. Here, the issue with G2's draft is that they, ca they don't want to 1 2 Yumi, and they can't counter Yumi on 3 by picking, let's say, top, like, let's say they pick Azir Graves, and then enemy goes Yumi Severe. And then here you have to choose are we picking Nautilus or are we picking Draven? So this is not something that they want to do. So they went Varus. Heimerding was out, and Ash was out, and this was just a brilliancy. And the main thing from SK here is. That this was the moment they recognized, oh, there's going to be complete front to back. Just slam a tank top that's going to have buttons. And we don't care if we're going to lose lane. We're going to play into bottom side anyway. And then we have Azir. Right? Here, in all honesty, right? In most cases, you pick the Yumi lane. Right? You pick the Yumi and then you pick whatever AD. You either pick AD together or you, you, you pick AD on three. That's what most teams would do here. Right? And now they went Varus, Lulu, Graves. And then you pick Akali on four. And in my mind already, the, the, the you, you can see in the draft the direction it's been going in is that it is going to be a front-to-back game. Imagine here if G2 are the ones to pick Azir on four. And then they pick, let's say, a counter-pick tank on five. Then it's going to be a little bit more of a cohesive composition. But I think this Akali pick here... Even though in isolation against Azir is something that we see often, this is just a composition that is not going to win in a front-to-back situation. And I think here SK did a really good job of recognizing that. And then also, of course, just straight up diving bot and winning the game on the spot. Really good. G2 made the adjustment of banning Yumi and then enemy team had to choose. Are we picking Lucian? Are we picking Lucian or are we giving the enemy Lucian Nami? Because we are not willing to play the Draven. Right? This is a good, good game. Right? And then finally, in G2's game, against Vitality, here Draven, Callista, Elise was banned. And then here, in most cases, I think Ryze's first pick is kind of overblown in terms of value. And the Ash Varus rotation was brilliant. Really good. Ash is going to, of course, deny most of the things that Jungle wants to accomplish. And uh, Varus Ash is just a very strong lane. They can push early, and that already, in essence, denies a lot of the things that G2 has done so far, right? To gain monster leads. Because that, their games always start level 1, and then they dive you level 3, and then they push out the jungler, and then so forth, right? They get the vibe because it's good into Lucian Nami. And it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter that Udir is stronger than Vi, right? If Udir and Vi, like Vi is never going to fight Udir. It's not necessary. She just needs to cover lanes and needs to play where she has push and then it's okay, 
right? Sure, in some cases, Udri being stronger than Vi is going to matter in 2v2s, 3v3s, but when you have Ash E, it becomes very easy to play a controlled game and you can always choose your fights, right? And that's super important. So, like, Udir in isolation against Vi, I think is super good. And I wish we see, saw more Udir against Vi, right? I wish we did. But this is a terrible game for Udir because the Kesante invites the Gwen on 5 and there's already a Cassiopeia showing. And this is a composition where Udir is going to really, really have some pain. Because keep in mind, Udir wants to buy Demonic Embrace and then he wants to go for Radiant Virtue. So the item, like, by the time he finishes his third item, which is rare on jungle, you are just in shambles. And this is once again the issue of blue side. Because if you look here at 4-5, into what the enemy has picked, it's very hard to like find champions that are going to solve this, right? Blind picking is awkward. It's like, what do you do? Do you just like, like the best thing that you can hope for? Like maybe you pick Wukong, right? You pick Wukong, and then you just fucking blind pick Orn. Like, let's say you do that. That could be a way. You just blind pick Orn, you take it up the bum, and you just go Wukong and, and uh, Orn. That could be a way. As an example. Maybe. But then it's like, oh, Gwen is 50 CS ahead of Orn. What do you do in this game? Could happen, right? And then it's also rough. Look, like here it's like, Wukong looks decent to me. Is Viego just bad? No, Viego is like an early game jungler and Viego got banned because they just target the Ike, right? But here you just need kind of tools to, to push yourself forward and to play forward. But nevertheless, right? Vitality, once again, even though I think G2 got outdrafted into these two games, I think both Vitality and SK played super, super well in the early game. It's like you're very short range. It's like Han Sama tried so fucking hard to carry this game, but there's so much shit thrown at him. So much garbage that is going to be thrown at his forehead, right? Ash arrows, Violts, Varus, Cassio. They can throw all of their tools on Lucian. It's like Lucian needs to 1v9 and it becomes too hard when the enemy has so many tools. But once again, I would have to, I want to highlight, even though I'm talking about G2, Vitality, Really, really good draft structure. Varus and Ash removing Draven Callisto to just guarantee, guarantee that there's not going to be any crazy sh shenanigans. They're, they are guaranteeing, yo, we don't want to get dove. We don't want to get level one invaded. We want to make the game as stable as possible. And also here I have to say, you know, Bo, brilliant ganking. Very good patterns. He, he really, like, he found a kill on Nami early uh, after they tried to bounce the wave. Vi secured the bot side crab and Udir ended up on the wrong side, right? I see Varus Ash, I play Nautilus. Yeah, could be. Yeah, could be. You know? But what AD do you play Nautilus here with? Could be that you just play Nautilus. You just eat shit until you can queue in and, and, and kill. Yeah, just go Nautilus, Samira. That could be crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that could be something. <laughs> that could be something, yeah. But nevertheless... I think that G2's ability to be very strong in the early game is a big strength and I think it's going to be super relevant as everything continues. I think that G2 just need to recognize uh, in draft when they find those balances. And I think that the Rise first pick is something that uh, teams are going to have to like maybe reconsider because the Rise first pick hasn't looked so good so far uh, in Europe at least. Okay, in my mind, I think there's ways for 5 to, to just pick for composition, you know? And the issue with Blitzcrank is that he has too small of a mana pool, and if you get pushed in, like, you just, you just struggle. You're gonna get pushed in, harassed, you know? And uh, you, just need, you just need more tools, I feel, uh, to, to, to play this game. The only way I saw G2 win this is because they, they perfectly, they just need to snowball the shit out of the game, but it's so hard. How do you, how do you create volatility in the game with the enemy bot lane as Ash Varus? It's very difficult. And then on top of that, Photon was out laning top. He burned Flash 1v1 against uh, BB. And uh, Cassio was just farming away. The thing is, people are saying that Blitzcrank is coin flip, but it's like a weighted coin. It's like legit like 15, 20 to 80. It's like, you, like it, sometimes Blitzcrank works if you have very strong AD and you, can, you have the space to like Flash on enemy to E and then to Q. That works, yeah? That definitely, uh, definitely works. 
make some noise. There we have Ender in the chat. Hello, Ender. And then finally, for me, uh, Vitality is first. The Vitality. Vitality have really figured out the meta, I feel. I, I think that they've figured out the meta and their learning curve has been gorgeous. And keep in mind, you know, there could be a world where they are 4 and 2, right? So, like, don't focus on the score too much, right? Don't focus on the score too much. I think G2 and Vitality are going to uh, lock in top 2. Uh, don't get baited too much by the score. Because it's like, would you rate Vitality differently if they lost the game against Fnatic? Because that was a game for them to lose, right? Would we have rated them differently? No, we wouldn't. So, let's, let's, keep, let's keep things realistic. Why is Vitality the strongest? I think that the draft they showed against G2 was gorgeous. I think the play that Bo is showing is absolutely astonishing. I think it's so nice to see. I think that he finds good gank angles, his pathing, his efficiency is just gorgeous. I think it's really, really insane. Like I think Vitality is, is, is a very complete team. Main concern for me, is, right, is it's like here, they showed Ash and Varus and they land super well. You know, main concern for me with Vitality is still, you know, the Caitlyn and the Luxus. Like, what happens when the meta shifts? Can can Vitality consistently figure out what they want to play bot? You know, I think that's that's the main thing that, um, that uh, you can pay attention to and maybe there's an entry there. And um, this time around Vitality was on red side against G2 and, the, and they, they drafted super, super well. You know, in hindsight, right? In hindsight, if you look at the draft of, of G2, it's like, G2, here Lucian Nam is, is open, like they could have also been the ones to, to be the Ash side, right? They could have been the Ash side, and maybe there was something for them to do, right? But I think Photon is really insane, I think Photon versus Adam is going to be a banger matchup. I'm really excited to see uh, those two play, unless they've played already in week one and I just completely forgot about it. Obviously, best of ones, things can change. You know, one weekend, one super week is, is enough to, to, to show us a lot of new information that is going to make us uh, change our opinion of things. I want to remind everyone that uh, after week one, BDS and SK were one and two and they looked horrible. They looked really horrible. SK won a game where Team Retics threw, but Extra Kick was looking really strong. BDS won a game against an SK that didn't know how the fuck to play the game. <laughs> and then they went into week the, the week two and they both 3-0'd and looked really, really insane.